short break. Now we have a session on how can MSME cooperation and innovation help solve the global water crisis by Mr. Manu Seth. Mr. Manu Seth is the Chairman, Environment Development Council of Asokam Jharkhand, a business leader with a passion for creating value, innovation, and delivering technology services that have a positive impact on people's lives. He's a strong communicator, able to effectively manage stakeholder, client, and colleague relationships. He develops groups into high-performance, creative teams that influence all levels of an organization. Let me proudly welcome Mr. Manu Sheth to the summit and to deliver his presentation. Over to you, Mr. Manu. Uh, thanks. Thanks. So, thank, thanks for giving this opportunity. And it has been great hearing you, a uh, lot of esteemed panelists and other speakers talking about this whole perspective and all contributing into, under the umbrella of SDG 6. So when we come to this uh, segment talking about MSME corporation and innovation, uh, how they will be contributing or how they will help to solve the global water crisis, I'm sure this uh, session uh, would not be adequate enough, but yes, the way we have highlighted the key parameters and the key functionalities, it really brings out a lot of key aspects that how it will work and what will be the uh, most important things that will be required. So when we talk about water crisis, there are a lot of basic things and basic problems which are in terms of safe drinking water, water requirements that is being required for the agricultural purpose, for energy, for the industrial developments, sustainability and development. These are very, very basic fundamental problems which are still uh, being existing in the system and they're going long. And various other uh, activities needs to be done from a government perspective, from the environment perspective, from the society perspective, and yes, we are here to talk about that, how, how innovation, which is from a technology perspective or the innovative ways and means can address those solutions, as well as the uh, department, which you call it as an MSME, which is like about small medium enterprises. Now, but when you talk about these uh, water challenges and crisis, it is brewing wars. Now, what do you mean by wars? Like today, the wars is not like fighting with guns and battles on the borders that's there, but uh, it's more, it's really hitting the economies of the society. It's bringing a lot of socioeconomic challenges, a lot of cultural barriers, a lot of uh, political problems are coming up. So it's very, very important to understand and address these problems where the innovation definitely plays a role, technology plays a role. Definitely, government has to boost schemes, PLI schemes, options where the segment of the community, when we say the corporates, when we say the collagramates, when we say small medium enterprises they have to really take a step forward they need a lot of supports in terms of infrastructure financial and other things to address these problems because when we talk about these water crisis as a problem almost 40 percent of the world population is really affected if not addressed well in time there is a huge chunk of number of people which will be at risk in terms of moving around water crisis we talk certain countries talk about as water crisis someone will talk it uh, give it a name as water shortage, someone will say water deficit, someone will say water stress. So from an MSME perspective and the innovation, I tried putting it into a four broad pillars, which will definitely contribute under the SDG 6, which is all about being sustainable development. And it's very, very important to integrate human, physical and the financial resources as uh, even we have heard before, which is all about in uh, transforming the economic growth because it's very, very important to ensure the finances being in place. One has to be innovative. One has to be transforming the governance, the protocols, the systems. And it is very, very important in providing the social safety net to the community, to the people, that how they are contributing and how things can be used back in the system or for the system. When we talk about like SDG 6 and we talk about technology, water, there are various usage, various perspectives where it is being used, various formats. It is, it's part and parcel of all of our daily life on all uh, daily ecosystems. But there are various infrastructures that needs to be built around that, which would definitely need financial assistance, which will definitely need education, which will definitely need awareness that how people can really work on those parameters so that water crisis and those kind of challenges can be addressed and the community can be benefited back. So some of the points, definitely the solution may not be, uh, it, we can say it's like one size doesn't fit all. We need to customize, we need to pick and 
we choose the solutions for the different countries, different communities, and different approaches. But foremost, what I feel and I would like to address and harp upon is education and awareness is very, very important. New technology is what we are talking about. Wastewater, when we talk about the water which is being used in the industries and the factories, can that be recycled? Can that be used back for some cleaning purposes? We are talking about water desalination plants. Can sea water being used for drinking waters? Improvise irrigations and agricultural water usage. That how do we use that? How, how do we pull up the water from the nearby water bodies? How they can be done? Or how can we generate electricity and energy from there? Like when we are talking about rainwater harvesting. And most important, again, where I'm uh, really happy upon is community governance is going to play the most important part. Their part and their role is very, very important because it is we, uh, we are, we all as one, whether it is an individual, whether it's a community, whether it's a collaborate, whether it's a community which is working for the agri community, we are using these natural resources and we need to work back on these natural resources. Otherwise, it really creates a lot of challenges for the community and the society and for the human mankind. Because when we even talk about MSMEs, Okay, there could be different schemes, there could be different projects they can work on. But it's very, very important because they might be the feeder suppliers to the bigger conglomerates. They might be the feeder suppliers to the nearby land banks or the agricultural community or the other society. When we talk about technology, we're saying innovation. So we are talking about solar power. That's the, again, we are more dependent on the natural resources. We are talking about fog catchers. We are talking about that. How do we use technology to convert water from the air pressure? We are talking about livestock technology, which was used for certain places. Drinkable book, and we are talking about that. Okay, what are the various means, policy systems that could be done? Air zero mass uh, perspective and the technologies can be used. So a lot of these technologies are there. Innovations are there. Some might be used in a European market. Some might be used and might be required for the market in Africa. Largely, even when we talk about India as a country in the Asian belt is also heavily underwater crisis. A lot of majority of the uh, states are, I would say, a very red alert area in terms of the water crisis. Definitely a lot of treatments are required. A lot of environment approaches are being required. So it has to blend together. But most important is that an individual MSME or an individual innovation, whether it comes from a body or an individual patent holder or a community will not work until unless the community join hands and work for it. When we talk about, like say MSME as a segment, there could be various ways and means they can contribute. They can go into the software automation. They can go into the tracking. They can go into the monitoring. They can go into optimization. So the ways, means and opportunities are immense. But for that, what is most important is resources monitoring, reviewing, and the most important is the legitimate use of the financial support that may be required by these MSME segments or the collaborates to optimize and utilize the current innovations, bring better innovations or change with time with the blend of technology, which can really be more impactful and influential in conserving water, reusing water, recycling water, and the various ways. Like I picked up some examples, which are very good examples on a global platform. And some of the other colleagues mentioned about finances. It's very, very important to have a PPP format. Partnerships are required. BOT formats are required. EPC formats are required. But from a funding perspective, a lot of policies needs to be reworked. They need to be reformed and they need to be monitored that how they are bringing an impact in terms of an yield on the agricultural community, in terms of yield where the water is being used with oil in the industrial belt, that how we can separate water and oil and can be reused back for the cleaning purposes. Some of the funds uh, which has really done good is like a water revolving fund, water equity fund, Kenya pool fund, Philippines, the fund which is operating from Philippines. It has been quite instrumental. It has been quite influential and it has been quite valuable. So these uh, models where the community, the system, the user and the provider, they all have to sync, join hands, work together and integrate in a holistic manner to work towards this natural resource as a cry, which is going heading towards crisis 
if it is not addressed well in time there are already a lot of alarm alarms happening in the country within india as a country in the asian belt in the F african markets globally uh, if we talk about the developed countries they can adopt technologies when we were talking about uh, uh, converting water from air uh, fog catcher uh, using those technologies which will separate the oil and the water and the water can be used in the industrial belts for cleaning so the opportunities for msme as a segment innovation is there it just like certain processes systems governance and monitoring is most important and very very critical to ensure that the application and the usages is very very uh, impactful is in uh, improvising the yield or the resources and bridging the boundaries and uh, even affecting the problems that is ha happening because of the water barriers like we spoke about technology yes we all know that technologies are there and some of the greatest technologies that have moved in the last one year we are talking about smart home we are talking about iot we are talking about water recycling we are talking about atmospheric water rain rainwater harvesting water desalination like even we mentioned before but we need to give them the scope of operation the utility needs to be there the application needs to be there so that it can benefit the society so we need we can't have any centralized thing which might work in us may work in india or what works in india may work in ghana or will work in uh, liberia or will work uh, somewhere in peru or chile every different market or a segment or a country has to have a customized solution the local bodies the local municipal bodies the local regulatory bodies have to amalgamate they have to work hand in hand with the uh, whether it's a financial body whether it's an executional body whether it is a partner now here when we say a partner can be an msme which is really contributing so they really need to be accountable for their delivery and show the better results in the society like i picked up certain names which are doing very good like even certain organizations in kenya are doing good certain organizations in india are doing good yes people say that organizations coming from canada us european markets denmark sweden are bound to do good because of the developed countries but the a uh, larger chunk of population is towards india china and africa as a belt in this part of the world and it is a really an alarming concern because the consumption on this part of the world is also very very heavy and very very high so it's very very important that how we make our system sustainable system is agile system is resilient in terms of ensuring that how do we handle these crises water related problems problems between the geographies and the boundaries and how it can be used because see we can't there are it will take time to generate water from whatever the new technologies or the new innovations that we are working on but definitely what we have is immense out of that there's a very small percentage which is a safe drinking water so how we can work on those directions desalination is going to be an upcoming thing where we can convert sea water to a drinking water or a water that can go to the community or the water that can go to the society so there are multiple use cases multiple applications it needs to be customized yes there has to be a central governing bodies there has to be the global central governing bodies which create mandates under this overall sdg governed by un as a body and gc bodies like gcpit are really contributing a lot in these initiatives so it someone have to walk the talk they have to do a lot of hand holding even uh, education and awareness will play a most important role and that's where we say that there has to be a lot of substantial efforts that are being required and that is being needed for the system and the need of the hour to improve the access of this natural resource and we can work on it to ensure that we don't fall up and fall prey to this kind of a crisis in the future so that's what i would like to uh, say in short and quick thank you Thank you so much, Mr. Manoshet, for the informative session. Thank you for joining us, and looking forward to working with you in the future as well. Thank you so sure. much.